There have been many attempts to find someone fitting the profile of Shakespeare's Dark Lady, so-called because many of the images used to describe her, from Sonnet 127 onwards, aren't what you might call light. These range from literal descriptions of her black hair and eyes to intimations about her dodgy character. At best they are earthy and sultry, at worst blunt and downright offensive. What characterises them mostly, though, is how sexually charged they are. Many scholars have floated the suggestion that the Dark Lady is a figment of the author's fantasy. It's even been suggested that any attempts to identify her are fruitless, pointless. Once again, I feel obliged to counter that if people will insist on scrabbling around at the bottom of the Stratford-upon-Avon barrel looking for connections, It's no wonder it seems pointless, because no doubt it is. And yet, if you look through the portal of other contenders, possibilities for her identity are readily forthcoming. Suggestions include the marvellously named Black Luce, a Clerkenwell madam and courtesan made good, well known to those at the inns of court, where de Vere studied for a time and Marlowe frequented, Another more recent suggestion has been Emilia Bassano. The discovery of this Jewish, highly cultured and musical woman created such a flurry of activity that she rapidly went from being suggested as having written The Merchant of Venice to skyrocketing as author of the entire canon. Attractive as it sounds, evidence has not been what you might call fulsome. Not yet, anyway. Though she certainly fits the physical profile of the lady described, as well as the bill of the virginal player from Sonnet 128, over whom the poet has a voyeuristic, fetishistic fantasy. Then there's Mary Fitton, the mistress of that potential Mr. W.H., William Herbert, Earl of Pembroke. This suggestion might certainly explain the liaison hinted at in the sonnets between the dark lady and the poet's own fair youth, causing a fierce rivalry on the onset of a deep depression and obsession with ageing for the poet. Some say the dark lady sonnets are addressed to several women, first and foremost Queen Elizabeth herself, which carries credibility given that there are some references to the poet being both her slave and servant and they a sovereign. There is also the opening line of Sonnet 125, with its reference to bearing the canopy, a duty de Vere and several other high-ranking nobles were known to have performed for Elizabeth, holding up the cloths above her throne on ceremonial processions. And if it doesn't mean this, the line's frankly unfathomable. A contender gaining significant traction of late is Lady Penelope Rich. Golden-haired but black-eyed, a celebrated court beauty, she was also the centrepiece of a number of sex scandals at court. Serially unfaithful, wife to several barons, she was muse to the poet Sir Philip Sidney. The increasing amount of shady suggestions in various salacious publications of the period suggest tantalising connections to some of the Dark Lady sonnets. Personally, though, for me, the most obvious contender for the Dark Lady seems to be Anne Vavasour, one of the Queen's ladies-in-waiting. Edward de Vere had a secret affair with her, when still married to his long-suffering wife Anne, surely the inspiration for Hermione in Winter's Tale. And this passionate affair resulted in Anne Vavasour falling pregnant, prompting a sensational scandal at court that saw de Vere, Anne Vavasour and their newborn son all being thrown into the Tower of London by an enraged Elizabeth. So many of the sonnets seem to come into an undeniable clarity in this scenario. The references to shame, scandal, regret and charges of being treated pitilessly and harshly. The poet does indeed seem angry with the dark lady herself for luring him into a sexual union in the first place because of the consequences that have subsequently befallen him. Even furious at fate, God and his genitalia for the frenzied pursuit of pleasures that led him to momentary ecstasies, compromised morals and lots of trouble further down the line because of it. De Vere never really recovered his position at court after the Vavasor scandal and was hitherto estranged from his son and guilt-ridden about the way he had treated both his faithful wife and his sovereign. There are allusions to cosmetics in the Dark Lady sonnets, something which some have seen leaning towards the suggestion that the Dark Lady was a lady of the night. 
However, it's interesting to consider both the amount of makeup worn by the ageing Elizabeth to cover smallpox scars, it has been suggested, and also the amount of slap on the face of the most notable remaining portrait of Anne Vavasour, in which she appears in such obvious makeup that one might assume either the painter disliked her intensely or making a none too subtle point that any blushes she had were but artificial. What's certain though is that her hair and eyes are undeniably black. Whoever the lady was, the relationship with the poet was clearly physical. Unlike those written to the fair youth, who is pedestalized as an untouchable, the dark lady is shown not as a courtly romantic maiden, but a siren with irresistible charms. De Vere was a celebrated champion jouster, the Queen gave him, in fact, a prize of a diamond-studded journal to celebrate his triumph at one tournament that she presided over as guest of honour. Literally, he shook his spear for her.